If you want a Rolls Royce here in Denmark, it will cost you $17,000 a month just in tax to have the four wheels on Danish soil. That is Damn. without the car, without even buying, buying the car, without lease, without insurance, without gas, without nothing. That's just from tax. <laughs> <laughs> and then I look at them and I was like, Wherever you guys are watching this show, I would truly appreciate it if you follow or subscribe. It helps a lot with the algorithm. It helps us get bigger and better guests and it helps us grow the team. Truly means a lot. Thank you guys for supporting. And here's the episode. All right, ladies and gentlemen, all the way from Dubai today, 16 hour flight to come see us. Philip Johansson, my man, how's it going? It's good, man. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you took a long flight. You got sick. I got sick. So props to you for making it, man. Oh, thank you, man. Like the the AC on the plane, it's like it's it's me. It's too cold, dude. When yeah. I when I fly, it doesn't even matter if I'm going somewhere hot. I wear a hoodie and sweatpants. I should do that too, man. Were you were you in shorts? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and a t-shirt, sick. man. And a t-shirt. Yeah. Well, Dubai's probably hot, right? Yeah, it's nice. It's how long nice. how long you been there? Because you're from Denmark, right? Yes. So I moved to Dubai like uh, six six or seven months ago. Wow. Yeah, and the reason for it is because uh, there's a lot of rumors going on, on online that um, Philip moved to Dubai because he want to get out of the, the government because he did illegal stuff and stuff <laughs> like that. I was like, God damn it, do your research. Right? If you do anything illegal in other countries and then go to Dubai, right? the Dubai government is going to hand you over like with a blink of an eye. Like, they don't give a wow. right? <laughs> So uh, I moved to Dubai because... When you hit a certain income level in Denmark, yeah, it goes from forty-two percent in tax to sixty-one percent in tax. Damn. Yes, and then I was like, okay, you want over half of my money that I made? Yeah. Okay. Now, now you are you're pushing it now. Then I talked to my tax advisors and, and my accountant back in Denmark, and then I also wanted a Rice Rice. And then uh, I remember we were in a meeting, uh, all of us, and then he said. Let me just, before you do that, let me just calculate how much that is. Then he went out of the room and then uh, five minutes later, he came back in and then he said, Philip, if you want a Rolls Royce here in Denmark, it will cost you $17,000 a month just in tax to have the four wheels on Danish soil. That is Damn. without the car, without even buying, buying the car, without lease, without insurance, without gas, without nothing. That's just from tax. <laughs> <laughs> and then I look at them and I was like, how the f how did, how did the f do we get out of that? <laughs> <laughs> so it was either Monaco or Dubai. And then I have a lot of mentors uh, and they all live in Dubai. And I was like, let's go to Dubai. Nice. And there's no tax there, right? There's no tax. They're just uh, about to implement a 5% uh, profit income tax. Which is still nothing. It's, it's nothing. It's way better than, than 61%. Yeah. That's for sure. So what's the income level in Denmark when it turns to 61%? It's when you make uh, 800,000 Danish crowns a year, and that is equal to around 120,000 US dollars a year. Oh, so it's not even that much. It's not even that much. And that's why Denmark is <laughs> it's driving all of the business owners out of the country. Yeah. So you must have been one of the few successful entrepreneurs out there in Denmark. Yeah, probably. Probably. Because that doesn't you know, give their citizens comfort when they're taking that much. Exactly. And uh, there's something in Denmark called a Yendelon. Uh, it's Danish. It's like, uh, if I don't have that, you can't have it either. Mm. You know that? Yeah. Right? And uh, I I bought a Mercedes uh, AMG 63, like the last big V8 uh, they did. And uh, I couldn't park it anywhere. <laughs> I couldn't park it anywhere because uh, people um, get uh, jealous and envy. Wow. Right? So uh, they will scratch it and like that just because it's a super expensive car damn that's such a bad mindset dude. yeah ex ex exactly and i was like this is not the country for me interesting yeah when i see nice cars and nice watches i get excited F me i'm gonna take the phone i'm gonna f film it and yeah. like, oh my god look at this <laughs> right yeah. <laughs> wow i wonder what caused that in that country do you think it's the leadership i think it's a it's a, it's, it's a nine to five work mentality right right it's it's like okay if if i can't even uh, afford a a Kia Picanto or something like that, and then how the f do this? B can I say that in this show here? 
Ja, yeah. yeah, go ahead, man. Go ahead. Yeah, how can this guy afford a... Shout out to today's sponsor, Factor. Factor's got delicious, ready-to-eat meals that make eating better every single day. Wherever tomorrow takes you, be ready with pre-prepared, chef-crafted, and dietitian approved meals. Guys, they got over 35 different options a week, so you could definitely find something you like. They got vegan, they got keto, they got veggie, they got a lot of meat, whatever you guys are in the mood for. They got two-minute meals, fuel up fast, they're restaurant quality. All you gotta do is heat them up. You don't gotta do anything else, no cooking, none of that. They also got snacks, smoothies, and more, and they got a wide variety of easy options for the day, like breakfast, midday bites, and more. They've done the math, guys. This is actually less expensive than takeout, and all their meals, like I said earlier, are dietitian approved, so they're nutritious and delicious. It's the perfect solution if you're looking for fast meals. It's flexible for your schedule. You could choose between six to 18 meals per week. No prep, guys. Definitely check it out. Factormeals.com slash DSH50 for 50% off your order. That's a big discount, guys. Factormeals.com slash DSH50. Check them out. A V8 twin turbo with 610 brake horsepower when I don't even can afford one with 62 mm. brake horsepower. Yeah. He shouldn't have that. And then scratch it. Did you work a nine to five before you became an entrepreneur? Yeah, man. I used to be a plumber like two and a half years a ago. What? A plumber. Oh, a plumber. A plumber, man. Wow. A plumber. Yeah. You were doing that? Yeah, yeah, plumber, like uh, fixing toilets and uh, pipes and uh, water and heating, you know? Yeah, and you like hated that. it, right? I hated it. Like, uh, so, like, four years ago, I remember, I remember I was, uh, I live in a small city in Denmark uh, called Slagelse. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of the work were in Copenhagen, the capital of uh, of Denmark. Yeah. And you had to drive to that capital every day. And I, I was stuck in traffic for one hour, two hours, three hours sometimes. Damn. Every day. And I was thinking, like, at 20, 27 years old, this can't be it, man. This, this, do I have to do this for the rest of my life? Mm -hmm. Sit here and be like, work for somebody that drives the big Mercedes AMGs and stuff like that? Yeah. It, it can't. If this is the rest of my life, right, I'm going to be super depressed and frustrated that because you will never get anywhere. Mm -hmm. And I actually ended up getting super depressed and frustrated because I knew there was more to life, but I didn't know how to get it. Mm. So instead of figuring out what to do, I ended up taking party, steroids, mm. hanging with the wrong people, and party, party, did a lot of bad yeah. that uh, I probably shouldn't have done. And uh, it actually got so bad, so uh, I ended at the hospital at 27 years old, and uh, the doctor told me my kidney number was higher than a, a cancer patient Dang. at 27 years old. That was pretty crazy because of all of the and the, the steroids and yeah, yeah. alcohol. My body was so big, and because of the I filled it with, I couldn't breathe. So it was simply shutting down. And and I didn't care after the hospital, after the doctor there. So I went out, took more, more steroids. More you didn't alcohol. care at all? I didn't care. I was like, Wow. Because I didn't know what to do with my life. It was like, if I had to do this for the rest of my life, then let's have some fun out of it. Right. You know? And um, then I went out, took more more steroids and stupid like that and then uh, my family uh, kind of slapped me in the face mm -hmm. at some point and then uh, seeing my mom cry like that changed everything for me wow like everything so uh, i decided from that moment that i wanted to give my family everything mm. like everything are you interested in coming on the Digital Social Hour podcast as a guest? We'll click the application link below in the description of this video. We are always looking for cool stories, cool entrepreneurs to talk to about business and life. Click the application link below, and here's the episode, guys. And uh, then I went on and searched how to make money online. <laughs> Classic. Like literally on Google, how to make money <laughs> We've online. We've all done it. Like, We've all been there. All done it, right? And I fell for... I fell for the Lamborghinis. I fell for the 16, 17 years old dropshipping guys yeah. <laughs> living down in Dubai, you know, and everything. I bought all of the courses, all of the mentorship, and uh, I actually ended up losing uh, $20,000. Damn. I, yeah, I had, I had to sell my house. I had to sell my car. Uh, girlfriend left me, and uh, I actually had to move into a basement apartment back in Denmark. Jeez. And there was no higher than this to the ceiling, right? And I had to bend my head so I didn't uh, bang my head into the pipes that were in the basement. So you couldn't even stand? I couldn't even stand. Wow. I, I couldn't even jump. 
<laughs> I, then I bang it. There was no windows, no nothing, concrete walls, no nothing. The only thing I had was a, a bed, a computer, an internet connection, and a broken Huawei smartphone. <laughs> that was the only thing I had, wow. right? And uh, I failed for two years uh, t- uh, trying to become successful mm-hmm. online, right? And I remember um, I was sitting there uh, in the basement apartment uh, on the corner on the bed, and uh, I remember I was sitting there and I thought, if my mom and dad sees me now, they will be ashamed of what I have done with mm. my life. I'm 27 years old. I have nothing to my name. I live off oatmeal because I have no money, right? And I was $20,000 in debt. So at that point, when I lost everything, then I decided to go all in. Because the reason I think I failed back in the days is because you kind of wanted it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You kind of want it. You kind of want to be the best. You kind of want to be number one. You kind of want to make a lot of money. You kind of want to have the nice house, the nice car, and all of these things. But now, after losing everything, I wanted it. Mm. Now, I wanted it. So I decided to go all in, but I had no more money. I spent all of my money. So I remember I went to my mom. I found this guy on a YouTube ad, and he told, uh, he said he could help me uh, sell other people's programs as an affiliate marketer. Mm. Right, this is our programs. Right. So um, I went to my mom, and then I said, "Mom, can I lend fifteen hundred dollars from you? I need to buy this mentorship here. I promise you, I guarantee you, I'm gonna pay you back one hundred times if you lend me this money here. Mm. This is this is the last thing I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna make work, mom. I promise." She agreed. She lent me the money, mm. and I bought the mentorship program. He taught me how to do it. The first 30 days, I made $9,300 from Damn. the basement, basement apartment, yeah? Six months later, I made $233,000 selling other people's programs. Wow. Within two years, I made my first million dollars online. And two and a half years, I made over $10 million. Wow. And then almost three years, $25 million. That's insane. That's insane. I retired my mom. I bought my mom a brand new Mercedes AMG, my... My dad's house burned it down, and the insurance company didn't want to pay him any money because they thought he set the fire. Uh. And because of the money I was now making, when my dad needed me the most, I was able to help him with a new apartment, furniture, clothes, because everything burned to the ground, everything. Wow. His wallet, he was old school, so he's, he stashed the money all over the place in the house, you know? Yeah. So he had nothing because of the money and because I went all in and, and, and did whatever it took to be successful. Then I could help him when he mm. needed me the most. I moved to Dubai, uh, bought an eight hundred thousand dollar Lamborghini. Okay. Cash. Damn. Right. Uh, I moved into the Palm in Dubai in an eight hundred thousand dollars a year a villa. Jeez. And now I help uh, hundreds, if not close to thousands of other people, quit the nine to five, doing the exact same thing. Yeah. So. And, and that's all in in what three years. Three years. So what exactly are you helping them selling? It's other people's courses? Other people's programs, digital programs, because you can become an affiliate for, let's say, it's kind of like, an affiliate marketer is kind of like an, an influencer. Mm. You know you know all of these uh, fitness chick uh, on Instagram, yeah, yeah. shaking their ass and uh, doing uh, squats and uh, with tight pants on and shit like that. They make no money. Mm. Because if you, if you sell a physical product, you make like, what, five, seven percent. It's low, yeah. From a $22 program or protein powder or something like that. If you sell something for $997 or $2,000 or $3,000 and it's digital, mm. you can make all from 30 to 50% of the sale because there's no manufacturing, there's no shipping, there's no nothing. Mm. And then the profit margin becomes a lot higher. Right. So instead of selling hundreds of low-ticket items, right, you should focus on high ticket because then you only need a handful and you mm. can already replace your nine to five job with it. Yeah. That's exactly what I did. That is exactly what I'm teaching other people. That is exactly what other people did when they follow my strategies. And some of them have paid off their credit card debt. Mm. They have sent their kids to college. They have created nine to five. They have brought their dream uh, penthouse apartment uh, in Miami, uh, travel across the US, traveling the world while making passive income, you know? Mm-hmm. The dream people are selling online, it actually happened. Yeah. Right? 
I like the model too because you can work from wherever you want. You can. You have location freedom. Exactly, and everybody have a goddamn smartphone now. Yeah. You literally just have to check your smartphone, record a seven second video, put some text on it, smash it onto TikTok and Instagram. It has never been easier to make <laughs> money online than it is today, yeah. right? And then people are sitting there and be like, oh my God, it's a scam. Shut up, man. Like, watch what is happening around you. The world is changing, especially after the f***ing virus, the yeah. right? Everybody went into a panic mode. And now, and now and they, can't still even, they can't still even see it that there is another way to do it mm -hmm. because they think it's a scam. But if you see all of the most successful people online, or in the world, what do they all have in common? We're talking about Andrew Tate, Ty Lopez, Grant Cadone, Tony Robbins, all of these guys here, what do they all have in common? Following. Following, and they all sell a digital program. Mm -hmm. So it's attention and knowledge, right? If you have attention and if you have knowledge, you can sell it. Mm. Just like a college, just like college, just like if you want to be a doctor, you pay a lot of money because you need to learn from somebody that has the knowledge that can teach you how to be a doctor. Right. It's the same, but this way, it's a lot quicker. Don't get me wrong, it still takes a lot of work if you want to make it work, mm -hmm. right? It still takes a lot of dedication and hard work if you want to be successful with anything. Mm. But the, the barrier of entry is way cheaper. So pretty much everybody can do it. Yeah, that's incredible. So did you quit drinking and completely now? Yes, I drink once in a while, right? right. But uh, steroids and no more. And also, if you take in Dubai, <laughs> they f <laughs> you up. <laughs> yeah, they, they arrest you for weed out there, right? Yeah, but crazy. They send you, the, the, if they take you with, a, there was a guy, I heard a story. There was a guy that got caught with 0 0.2 gram of yeah. in the airport. He went two years in jail Damn. somewhere in the desert with uh, 40 other people in a little cell no somewhere, way. somewhere out there. <laughs> wow. I was like, yeah, that's not happening. Well, when you're that extreme, that's why there's no crime there, you know? Exactly, man. And I, I, lo I love it. Uh, like, you don't have to, you can leave your $800,000 Lamborghini uh, at the mall in, in the f uh, front and then just walk away and nothing happens. Yeah. You can even leave uh, your wallet with all of the money in, uh, opened and everything, <laughs> and uh, nobody there to do anything. That's crazy. Right? Yeah. It's good. You can't do that here in the US. Definitely not, dude. No, I'll, you can't do that back in Europe. Nah, that'll be gone in seconds in Europe and in the US. Exactly. Me and my girlfriend, we walk in Dubai at five in the morning uh, because we wanted to see the JBR and the beach walk and everything. And we walk in with uh, gold chains and the Tiffany and Cartier and Rolexes and diamond rings and everything. Uh, and, and nothing happened. <laughs> nothing. We walk in past the a group of 20 people without no care in the world because it's safe. Mm. Nobody dares to do anything. You can't do that here. Yeah. It's impossible. You're gonna get uh, stabbed or uh, f robbed in, in no time. Absolutely. So people thought you were committing crimes when you moved to Dubai. Why did people think that? They, I, I don't think everybody think there's these. You know, when you become successful, there's already some, uh, always somebody that's trying to bring you down. Mm -hmm. I, always, there's always somebody that's trying to bring you down because they're envious or jealous, right? So. They thought because I was uh, selling the, the course I was selling, that I'm still selling, that it was illegal mm. because I taught other people how to be an affiliate. And when, when you teach other people how to be an affiliate marketer with digital programs and you literally sell a digital program, I tell them, hey, you also have the option to sell mine if you want to, which is 100% optimal. You can even become an affiliate for free without buying the program. right? And then there went these rumors, oh my God, Philip, he, he scammed the people into uh, this course here and like that. And that's why he moved it to Dubai because he's hiding from the government. I'm like, you have no clue what the f you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's crazy. So you like Dubai a lot? I fucking love it, man. I got to check it out, man. It's been, <laughs> yeah. on, been on my bucket list. You have to, man. You have to. The, the first week I went to Dubai, I was like, just looking at all of the buildings with all of the lights and it's, it's, it's crazy, man. All, all of the supercars. And, and if you think you make a lot of money, right? Uh, I live on, on one of the fronts on the poem, mm -hmm. right? And uh, I'm the pool boy mm. on, on my front. Front is like a, a street, you know? So there's like these, uh, you know, on the poem. Yeah. That's called a front. And I live uh, on one of the fronts in the middle, around the middle. And I have like the smallest house there. Wow. I have like the smallest house. That's why I'm, I'm saying I'm, I'm the pool boy. And you said it was 800 G's? $800,000 in, 
in rent a year. <laughs> in rent? <laughs> oh, in I rent. It's not, house, even, it's not even my house, man. It's rent. Never own a house until you have a lot of money, right? Oh, so right. I'm renting it. And uh, and my house is literally the, the smallest of them all. Oh my like, God. There's like, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm telling you, man, if you... You, I can't even say it. you have to see it before you believe it, man. It's Dude. like the other house is like six, seven, eight times bigger than mine with three swimming pools on, on one of the grounds and, and one of the rooftop and a garage under the house and Bruh. and, and like that, man. I'm telling you. And uh, you know what? A funny story. Uh, the one I'm I'm renting the house from is a, a super cool guy and. Uh, He lived on Billionaire's Row. Mm -hmm. It's G front. That's uh, with the view of Atlantis uh, and Atlantis Royal at the end, right? So you yeah, have yeah. that view. That's called it Billionaire's Row, because there's like 44 houses on that G front, and and they live like eight or nine billionaires on that row. Damn. And uh, he took me there, right, one day, and and I'm telling you, man, there's so much money that you can't even you can't. You can't even understand it. There's so much money in the world, and there's so so many people that are willing to spend a ton of money to spend that money. Mm. There's so much money in the world that everybody could become a billionaire, and wow. people can't people can't get it, right? But then I he took me to the billionaires' row, right? And uh, the houses there was as big as my element, elementary school back <laughs> in Denmark. Like he he said, this house here, Philip, it has a zoo with. 30 exotic animals in the basement. No way. And he said, what? Yeah. He has his own zoo. He's a super <laughs> nice guy, he said. He's a super nice guy. Then the other house next to it, this house here has its own golf court in the house. I was like, what are you saying here, man? You're crazy. And then the other house, right? It was like, it, it was so big. It, you have, <laughs> it was gigantic, right? Gigantic. And uh, he had the biggest ex exotic car collection in the world. Damn. It, it was even on Supercar Blondie uh, yeah, episode. So, uh, yeah, I mean, those houses were sold for 200 to 240 million dollars. Wow. It's, it's crazy, man. Levels to the game, man. Exactly. So when I came to Dubai and I thought, that, like, oh my God, I'm super successful. I'm the pool boy wow. in Dubai. Right? There's like billionaires. That was at the end of my front. There is a, a house just got sold for for 210 million dollars and that's a, a billionaire from india or something like that and he just bought two houses on billionaire's row for his two kids mm, first kids so he just bought a house for 200 million dollars and another house for 120 another house for 150 dollars that's insane right because he can that's what i'm saying there's so much money yeah and there's not there's enough money for everybody it's just a matter to go get it And that's good advice for people watching. I think if they're at the top of their area right now, wherever they're living, they should relocate. 100%. Yeah. 100%. I remember back in Denmark, then I moved out of my hometown because I didn't want to hang with the same people I hang with since I was a little kid because they were still uh, four people to uh, splice a f six pack, uh, two boy uh, beer at the gas station and like that and mm -hmm. couldn't afford uh, cigarettes and like that you know just people trying to bring you down and then you wanted to level up then i moved to another city uh, closer to my girlfriend back uh, there mm. uh, to a penthouse in a new city and then i got to know some people there but quickly i quickly accelerated above them and i right. was like and then the tax <laughs> happened and i was like i'm out <laughs> I'm, i'm out bitches see you <laughs> so you, you took your girl from denmark to dubai or you met a new girl in dubai no no it's the same Oh, the nice. same, but uh, she has two kids, so she stays uh, back in Denmark. Okay. So um, I fly her to Dubai every every week. In business Damn, class. long distance relationship. Yeah, but uh, business class every week. I, <laughs> I don't think she can complain. <laughs> wow. No, props to you, man. Not a lot of people can make those work these days. Yeah. 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 She's super sweet, and to be honest, to be honest, if um, I met that girl back in Denmark when I made like, I think I hit it like. 5,000 a month selling all of people's programs back then. And then I met her, mm. Mindy. Mindy, super sweet girl. And, um, you know, I I had a lot of girls and, and stuff like that. And I talk about business. I talk about being successful and mm -hmm. what I wanted with my life and what I wanted to accomplish and what I, what things I wanted, you know. And they just look at me like I was 
stupid. <laughs> you know that look? Yeah, yeah. When you talk about your dreams and to a small-minded per- person, they'd be like, get grounded, Philip. No, f- no. I don't got time for that. F-, you know? And then I met her, Mindy. Even while I didn't make that much money, I hit her around 5,000 a month. And she just, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Mm. Let's, oh my God, that's going to be so crazy. Yeah. And she just supported me. Supported me that's all awesome. the way. And I could talk to her with with anything. Mm. And to be honest, if I didn't met Mindy at that time, I would not have got to where I am today. Because I was probably been too busy chasing girls. Right? So... I think it's super important that if you have somebody, it doesn't need, it need to be a girlfriend. It can yeah. even be your mom or your dad or your uncle or your cousin or, or anything. But I think it's super important that you have like somebody you can talk to that, that can see your vision and maybe not even see the vision, but support you mm. in, in, your, in your dreams and goals. That's also one of the reasons for I created the new program I have now uh, where you can even join for free mm-hmm. because... What you need in, to succeed is surround yourself with like-minded people. Yeah. 100%. For sure. I, if you say something, if you say an idea, then you have 10 others say, like, you can do this, right? And then you need mentorship. Mm. And those two things are super important. And that's why I created the new program where you can actually join for free and get my mentorship for free. And the community with 10,000 other people on the same path as you are. That's powerful. Just being around good energy, people in, in your industry is, is very good, you know. Exactly. Exactly, man. Did you have a mentor along your way? Mentors. Did yeah, you I, have one? Yeah, I invested more than $300,000 in myself. Damn. Yeah, you, you need to, man. You need to. It's, it's kind of like if you want to be a doctor. Like you, you, you can't just be a doctor. You're probably going to a lot of people on the way in order to be a surgeon, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you learn from somebody that have done it, you caught 10 years. And maybe save a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe not a lot of people in the process. You know what I mean? I hope they're not doing that. <laughs> right, right. So, of course, I have mentors. I, I, al- I always knew the power in mentorship. That's why I, I, I invest a lot of money in mentorship. Yeah. And, because every time you want to go to a new level, just like Dubai, there's always somebody that have reached that level. Mm. So instead of figuring out yourself, and think like you're a goddamn super, superman and can do everything yourself, be humble mm-hmm. and ask for help, right? And, and if you find somebody you can relate to and have done something that you want to do, invest in him. Yeah. And he can teach you exactly how he did it. And the good thing with mentorship is you retain that information, right? So if you lost everything today, you'd be able to make it back. 100%. If I lost everything, if I lost my following, if I lost uh, my Rolexes and uh, all of the things, my cars, my villa, I know exactly what to do. Yeah. And I can even do it faster now because I know exactly what to do. Exactly. But with certain nine to fives, if you lost your job, that's, that's a bit harder to replicate. Exactly. Let's say you work in a nine to five and you, you work there for like five or six, uh, six years and you get a little bit of race, right? A little bit. A small, that's not going to help uh, change your life have, at all, right? And if you lose that job after working there for six years and you find another job, mm-hmm. you'll have to start all over again. You have to grind your way up again, all over, and build the relationship with the company and shit like that. Be extra hours and blah 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 blah, <laughs> blah right? Waste of Absolutely. waste of life, man. How are you maintaining such high energy levels? I don't know, man. <laughs> I drink a lot of coffee. <laughs> okay. I just started. I just started drinking coffee. You just started drinking yeah, coffee a month ago. Really? Yeah. I think I drank coffee since I was 14 years old or something. Damn. Yeah, man. I was a plumber. You kind of lived off coffee, you know? And coffee is a like, miracle joke. Yeah. Right? It definitely kickstarts your day, but I feel like you're just energized all day, man. I feel like it's more than just coffee. It, it's <laughs> mindset. It is, man. And, and I get... For sure, man. For sure. And to be honest, I, I get a high. I get a high of uh, helping other people. Mm. You know, the most selfish thing you can do is like help other people. You know why? Why? Because if you buy if you buy a $60,000 watch or a gold chain or $800,000 car or, or, or villa on the beach and like that, you you get a high for like a week. Mm. That's it. And That's it disappears. It? I bought the Lamborghini for 800000 and I was like, oh my God, this is nice for five days. <laughs> and now I didn't drive it for like seven days. Just went. It's just there. Wow. But if you help other people, the feeling you get inside is worth way more mm. than that. 
right? Because if I help you do something, level up in your life or whatever, right? I feel good about it. Mm. I feel really good about it because oh my god, I did that for you, man. I did that for you. Kind of like when that's why I have the weekly mentorship calls mm. for all of my students, where we are 500 people on or something like that. And I I say you get one hour with me, but I stay for three hours, or three and a half hours. Yeah, because I just I love it. I love it. And they, 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 I asked them at the end, uh, did you get something out of this? Oh my God, Philip, I love it. I love it. Thank you for the help. And thank you for taking the time looking over my Instagram account and stuff like that. And I leave that call after three and a half hour, hungry as f but happy. Wow. Right? That's cool. Yeah, man. So that's maybe why I have this high energy level. Yeah. No, that's relatable. When you help someone, whether it's giving them whatever, and they, you see the direct impact, it, it definitely feels really good. Yeah, exactly. And if they take action from what you tell them and it, it works for them, mm -hmm. they'd be like, yes, man. Yeah. But if they're lazy as <laughs> it's like, get the <laughs> out of here. I can't help you. Nobody can. I hate can. laziness. Yeah, I hate it. I can't stand it. Out of the hundreds or maybe even thousands of people you coach, what are the common problems you see in them? So when I created the first program, the Seven Figure Accelerator, I call it it, right? I taught them how to sell high ticket digital products as an affiliate using Instagram, mm -hmm. right? Seven second videos, bam out there and even build all of the check for them, right? And I only taught them that. But, but what I have learned now after 10,000 people have, have went into it and a lot of them got a crazy amount of results, mm -hmm. right? Some of them made $130,000 in, in 30 days and like that. Yeah. It's like stupid, stupid amount of money that people can't even get, right? But what I have seen now throughout the time after I've been doing this for a year, the reason for people fail it's because they don't know why they're doing it. Mm. They don't know why they're doing it. They don't have a clear direction where they want to go with their life. I want to make an extra 3000 a month. Yeah, but why? <laughs> why? And by the way, $3,000 a month is not going to change your life at all. Yeah. At all. If you want to change your life, you need, to, you need to dream big, right? You need to dream big and you need to go for 20, 30, 50, 100K a month, right? That's where life gets really fun. Right? Yeah, and you need done. to shoot for that. You need to shoot for that. So what I teach them now, and the reason for people fail, is because they don't know where they want to go. Mm. They just want to make money. Yeah, but why? Right? The reason for I wanted to make money is because I wanted to help my family, probably saving me from dying at an early age. That's why I wanted to become successful, and I want to make all of the money right. possible. Right? That's my why. But people are not aware of why they actually want to do it. It's kind of like when I started this podcast here, it's like, you kind of want the nice car. That could be nice to have the nice car, yeah, but mm -hmm. why do you want to have the nice car? Why do you want to have it? It's because you want to prove to all of the teachers back in, in, in school that you can f do this and that you actually can become something with your life. Yeah. You want to prove to uh, the girlfriend that left you and told you you were a goddamn loser. Do you want to prove to her that you can f do it? That is a strong why, mm -hmm. because that is emotional, right? So I teach them that. And then the other thing why people fail is because discipline, right? Discipline. It's kind of like going to, a, to the gym. If you want to have big muscles, if you want to look good, if you want to be in shape, you have to hit the gym every single day, mm -hmm. every day. At the moment you stop, you lose your gains. You want to take a day off? Yeah, I don't. I train wow. every day, every day. I even have a gym now back in the villa because now I'm so busy. I work like 14 or 16 hours a day. Sometimes when I launched the news thing here, I didn't sleep for two days because just working, 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 right? Jeez. But that's discipline because I have a strong why. Hmm. I know where I want to go with my life. I know what I want. So I teach them that in the new program, the High Achiever Society, because those two things are the reason they fail. If they have those two things, like... Desire, a why, and discipline. If they learn how to do that, then they can make anything work. Mm. Doesn't matter if it's Amazon, affiliate marketing, uh, building a podcast, whatever it is, you have a strong desire and discipline. That's why you have built this podcast to what it is so quickly. Yeah. Because you have those two things. I got a strong why and the work ethic like you had. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And discipline. Even Regardless, if I'm not feeling that good now, but... I'm here still because I know I have to. Mm. If you are not feeling good, you still show up because you know you have to. It's discipline. 
it's regardless of how you feel, you just do it anyways. Yeah, I hate excuses, dude. Exactly. Exactly. Where do you want to go in life? Your why? And then be disciplined to put in the work every single day and you can accomplish anything. Love it. Philip, where can people find you, man? Where can people find your programs? So uh, Instagram, Hustle Phil. Instagram, Hustle Phil. Click the link in my bio and I show you how to get discipline, the desire and the online business and I teach you for free. Not only that, if you join the program, I teach you for free how to do it. You get my mentorship and you get 10 plus of the top 1% affiliate marketer to mentor you every single week. This is for free. Find me on Instagram. Let's get it. Love it, man. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, man. Yep. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me. Thanks for watching, guys. See you tomorrow. Safe flight back, my man. Thank you, man. Thank you.